Now that we have a package in Octopus Deploy, we can deploy it. As you know, we can see the packages in library and in packages tab. So we have one package with a specific version. In order to create projects, we have to go to projects tab and add a project using the add project button. You can also create groups in order to group the projects. That's optional. So if I add a project, we have to give it a name. For example, I can say CICD demo. And if you want more advanced options, you can have project description and then you can have project group, but we don't have a group and project lifecycle, leave it as default for now. When we go through the advanced topics of Octopus Deploy, I will talk you through the lifecycle. So we click on save and our project is ready. The next step is to define process. A process is basically all the steps that we have to take in order to deploy our code. The steps such as create reverse proxy, copy the files, create users, grant access, that type of things. Any of these steps that in an actual world, even if we wanted to deploy a website manually, we would have to take will be the steps of your project in Octopus Deploy. So in order to add a step, we click on add step and there are a lot of steps in Octopus Deploy that you can use. For my case, because I'm going to deploy this to a Windows server and to host this website under IIS, I might use steps that are specific to Windows and IIS. If you are using Java, you might want to use, for example, Nginx or Tomcat, or if you are using Docker, you may want Kubernetes. You have to search for the step that makes sense to you. For example, if I say Tomcat, and wait a bit, you will see that there are steps for Tomcat. For example, stop start app in Tomcat or deploy to Tomcat via manager. Or if I want like Nginx, you will see that there are like deploy to Nginx steps here as well. There are a lot of um, steps specific to AWS and Azure as well that you can use. So all these would require you to do scripting, a lot of scripting sometimes, but using Octopus Deploy, all these scripts are available to you out of the box. Because I'm going to deploy to IIS, I can type in IIS and I see that there is one step which says deploy to IIS. There are some community steps as well. So some steps, the ones that are basically blue and it says by Octopus Deploy, they come out of the box. Developers can create steps and share it with others as well. And we call them community contributed steps, which are most of the time PowerShell and Bash scripts as well. For example, IIS Reset or creating application pool or creating application IIS app pool restart you just have to browse and find what you need so let's say we want to deploy to IIS so I add a step and step name can be deploy or copy let's say copy copy to IIS by default steps are enabled you can disable them and then you can decide where this is going to be deployed which is, as I said, it will be sent to the tentacle and it will be executed on tentacles that have a specific environment and a specific role. And the next step is that you choose a role. So we are going to deploy to IIS. So if you remember when we installed a Windows tentacle, we said its role is IIS. So by default, Octopus Deploy will find all the available tentacles. For example, if you have five servers, it will find all the five tentacles on five servers and will deploy the code to all five tentacles at the same time. You can decide that you want to deploy one server by one server. So if you click on configure a rolling deployment, Octopus Deploy is going to deploy one server, finish it, go to next server. To me, this seems safer. And if you want to do the rolling deployment, but for example, say two servers at the same time you can change the window size to for example two I normally leave it to one and then you choose your package so your package can be in different places now we are using the octopus deploys built-in repository so we need the package ID if you just click in this box you see the list of packages and we choose CICD demo and the next step is specific to this step basically up to where you choose your package is shared amongst all steps that's why I explained step by step as of here it may change as I said before if you use for example nginx you get nginx setups if you deploy to azure you get azure setups it's impossible to explain every single available step in octopus deploy you have to familiarize yourself with the available steps 
For example, I can say I'm going to create IIS website. Uh, my website name is CICD demo and I let this uh, file to be deployed to package installation directory. This is the directory that we specified while installing the tentacle. Application pool name can be same CICD demo. Because this is a .NET Core, we say this is no managed code for the application pool and start the IIS application pool, yes. Uh, and the port cannot be 80 because I'm using port 80 for Octopus Deploy. This can be like 80, 8000, let's say 8000. And for the host name, let's say CICD demo.local. I will go and um, so this is not a real domain, but I'm going to put this in the local host file so that we can test. So at the bottom, you have the conditions part that is available in all build steps. Again, no matter what build step you use, when you specify the role of a server, the code will be deployed to all the tentacles with that role. You can limit to specific environments. So by default, you are running for all applicable uh, environments in the lifecycle, or you can say only run in this given uh, environment, or you can say skip given environments. So for example, if you want to say this package should never ever be deployed to production you can say skip an environment that is called production for example and run condition by default is success which means that if you have a step before this step that previous step should succeed in order for this step to be executed or you can say always run that means that no matter whether the previous step failed or succeeded this has to be executed and variable uh, in here allows you to create a variable. We haven't gone through variables yet. And based on the value of that variable, this step can execute or be skipped. By default, all the steps are not required. That means that if for any reason this step cannot be executed, your, your deployment won't fail. But if you click on this checkbox, which I suggest you do normally, if for any reason this step cannot execute, your entire deployment will fail. And then we click on save. So now I have a project with one step and that one step creates a website in IIS and deploys my package. If you want extra steps, you click on add step and keep adding more and more steps. So I let you create your project and in the next lecture, I deploy this project and we go to server and see what happens on the server.